in all these years that uh, I've worked in Formula One, what uh, um, was striking me is the, the high technological level, uh, the high technological research that you've got in Formula One. Uh, everything is at the extreme. Even if I try to describe it, it won't come anywhere near what it's like. Uh, it's the only thing I can really say. It's like a roller coaster ride that you control. Very fast roller coaster ride. Finally, now we have this hypercar coming, which is using the technology with, that we worked so hard to develop in Formula One. Um, now there's going to be some real special customers that get to really experience what I feel in, in the Formula One car. Well, it's going to be the same technology from engine wise. Um, the car will be heavier than the real Formula One car, so it's not going to have the downforce like a Formula One car. But sound and electronics, I'm sure, is going to be very similar. Regarding all emission regulations worldwide, we have to change a little bit the compression ratio in the engine. Then we need additional sensoric at the engine, uh, but this is always linked to regulations. We change, for example, the throttle system, but we still have 1.6 liter. We rev up to 11,000. It's still the crank house out of the Formula One engine. It's still the cylinder head out of the Formula One engine. We use air springs for the valve train which is the same then in the Formula 1 engine. So this is everything the same. Yeah? So it is produced in the same uh, machine shop than the Formula 1 engine, on the same machines, on the same fabrication machines. It's all the same. So here is the, uh, the powertrain for, uh, for Project 1. Uh, what you can see here is the main combustion engine, so we call that the ICE uh, internally here. Uh, the internal combustion engine uh, consists of a lot of hybrid components as well. So we have an MGUK uh, on the side of the engine, uh, which is 120 uh, kilowatts. We also have an MGUH, which fits in, uh, in the middle of the turbocharger on the center V of the engine, and uh, that's around 90 uh, kilowatts in power. Runs at around about 100,000 RPM, so very, very high speed device. Because we have a, an electric machine uh, within the turbocharger and also on the side of the engine, we have lots of opportunities to sort of move uh, power around. You could put uh, electrical energy into the MGUK on the side of the engine, then you could also harvest brake energy and charge from that machine. So we, we can do exactly that now, but it's at a higher power level, so 120 uh, kilowatts. So that electric machine uh, gives us some really quite amazing opportunities really that are just not, not normal in automotive yet. And uh, firstly, turbo lag simply doesn't exist. So we don't need to wait for the turbine and the compressor to spool up to speed. We can literally just command the speed uh, on, onto the electric machine almost instantly. Uh, we have boost pressure and everything ready for you. So that's, you, you know, you're driving a highly boosted engine, but you don't have to worry about turbo lag. The second you start to squeeze the accelerator in, mm. in project one, it's, it's gone. It, it's flying down the road. Yeah, it's true. There's many components in this car which are not existing in a race car. So also comfort systems like navigation system, an HVAC, so an air conditioning system. These are all components which you can think about in the beginning. Do I really need it? Or should I take it away maybe? And the 12 volt water battery is also something which you said, which is important in such a car. And uh, we have some difficulties to try to try and find the, the right space for everything. But um, we are at a quite good level currently. Packaging is almost finished. There's still some tiny challenges in every little corner and there's not much space left. You have to have a car which you can start in your garage by push off the button you know, without having a Formula One team bring it to life every morning maybe. And uh, yeah, for sure, we do have ESP, we do have um, dedicated um, instrument cluster for the car. We do have a NAV system as well. Uh, and I think we do have a nice interior as well. <laughs>